Good afternoon, Year 5, and welcome back to our fourth lesson um, in outdoor learning this half term, all about endangered animals. So I'm just going to uh, share my screen so we can get uh, started. Um, excellent. OK, so last week we looked at the illegal wildlife trade and there was a quiz. If you would like to get your work from last week, because I'm going to go over the answers now, um, then please pause the video, go and get your work and a coloured pen and pencil, and then we can mark our work together. Um, if not, uh, then you can carry on and just listen to the answers as we go through them. So the first thing you had to do was watch a very short film and name five animals affected by the illegal wildlife trade. I think a lot of you probably got quite a few of these without even uh, watching the video. But the answers were we had elephants, tigers, rhinos, jaguar, snow leopard, the pangolin, marine turtle, macaw, orangutan and shark. Those were all the ones that were in the video. Um, if you've got some other ones there, that's also fine because there are a lot of animals affected by the illegal wildlife trade. So question number two, how many African elephants are killed by poachers on average every day? So the answer was 55. And uh, the fact about that, uh, that was in the presentation was that around 20,000 African elephants are being killed every year for their ivory and that's around 55 every day. So number three, this animal is the most traded wild animal in the world. Can you guess what it is? Well done to all those people who guessed the pangolin and the pangolin is snatched from the wild every five minutes um, and they're trafficked um, for their meat and use of their scales in traditional medicine. Question number four. More African elephants are being killed than are being born. And the answer to that is true. Around 90% of Africa's elephants have been killed in the last century. So if more of the population is being killed than uh, being born, that means the population is in decline and that's why um, those animals are endangered. Question number five, how many tigers are left in the wild? So the answer was around 3,900 tigers and the fact around this was that wild tiger numbers dropped by more than 95 percent during the 20th century because of the illegal wildlife trade and loss of habitats. Question six, which product is illegal to buy as a holiday souvenir? And you could have ticked more than one product. So we had ivory jewellery, tiger skin and exotic pets. All of those are illegal to buy as a holiday souvenir. Question number seven. What animals are trained to detect wildlife products such as ivory and rhino horns in airports? And the answer is dogs. Well done to all those who got that. Number eight, which of these animals is captured to make traditional medicine? And the answer is tiger. Um, but again, if you've got pangolin, pangolins are also uh, used for traditional medicine. So either of those would have been correct. Um, tigers are killed for their skins and for their bones, which are used in traditional medicine. Number nine, which of these animals is captured for its scent gland to make perfume and traditional medicine? And the answer is musk deer. Um, so musk is one of the most valuable natural products in the animal kingdom and can be worth three times more than its weight in gold. And finally, question number 10, how many animal species have been found to be in illegal wildlife trade across the world? And the answer to that was around 7,000. So well done, all those people who had a go at the quiz. It was quite tricky, um, but well done, everyone. So today what we are going to be looking at is to try and understand 
why there isn't a legal wildlife trade and how it impacts people, animals and the environment. And what we're going to use is what's called a development compass rose. And there's four parts to this compass. There's the natural, economic, social and who decides. I'm going to give you 20 seconds to have a little think, jot it down, or if you're working with someone in the room with you, have a little chat. What do, we, do you think it means by natural, economic and social? Well done, Year 5. So, natural, um, we're looking at things to do with the natural environment. So, energy, air, water, soil, living things and the environment. Economic, this is questions around money, buying, selling, jobs and producing things. Social will be things about people their relationships, culture, traditions, and the way they live. And the final part of this compass was who decides. And this is about who makes decisions, what choices there are, who benefits and who loses out. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this four points of the compass to think about questions and how all these things link together. So I'm going to do an example with you to start with and I'm going to give you a picture and then we're going to think about the kind of questions we want to ask around natural, economic, social and the last one is who decides. So I have um, started with a tiger here, OK, and I want us to think about what questions could we ask about the tiger in terms of the natural category. So these are some of the questions that I thought of. Where are tigers found in the world? What do tigers need to survive? And what is happening to the tiger's natural habitat? So those were just some few questions that I thought of in the natural category of that compass. Economic. All right, so these are questions about money, buying, selling, jobs and producing things. And remember, all these questions, we're trying to work out what is going on in the illegal wildlife trade and why is it happening? So economic questions I had. Why are tigers hunted for their skins? Why do people buy tiger bones? Who buys tiger products? Who do people sell tigers for? What are the products, where are the products from tigers being sold? So those were some of the economic questions I had about the illegal wildlife trade around tigers. The next one is social. So that's questions around people, their relationships, cultural traditions and the way they live. So my social questions were, why do people kill tigers? What traditional medicine do people use? How can modern medicine help prevent tigers from being killed? Should people be allowed to carry on with their cultural traditions? And the final bit was around who decides. So these are questions around who makes decisions, what choices there are and who benefits and who loses. So I want to know who makes laws to protect tigers? And how can we prevent people from buying products that come from tigers? You might have some other questions that you would like to ask. But I just think it's really interesting when we think about who decides, for example, how can we prevent people from buying products that come from tigers? Before we can answer that question, we really need to know why are people buying products that come from tigers, even if they do know it's illegal? What are people doing with these products? Are people making lots of money from these products? 
And what effect is it having on the natural environment? So all these questions are linked and they give us a better understanding of what is going on. So today, our activity is going to be to come up with as many questions under these four headings for a picture that I'm going to show you. So this is our first picture, and this is going to be your first independent task. As you can see, it is the pangolin. And as we know, a pangolin is snatched from the wild every five minutes, and it is used both for its meat and also its scales to produce traditional medicine. I would like you now to pause the video and in a minute and think about these four headings. What questions can you ask about the pangolin that are in the natural category? What questions can you ask about the pangolin that are in the economic category, in the social category, and also who decides? Remember, there's no wrong or right answers and you can ask as many questions as you like. I don't mind how you sort it out. You could divide your paper into four pieces and have titles in four corners. Or you can do it like I have done and have the title on the left hand side and the questions uh, going out of the side like that. You could do it as a spider diagram and have the um, each title in the middle and then questions going out of it. I don't mind how you do it. Um, you could also draw a picture of the pangolin if that helps you. So I would like you to pause the video now and ask as many questions as you can based on these four points of the compass and why, trying to really delve into why the pangolin is um, used in the illegal wildlife trade. Well done, Year 5. So you should have lots of questions about the uh, pangolin based on those four titles. This is at your second independent task, and I would like you to do the same for this picture. As you can see, um, there is a picture of a dog. This is actually a sniffer dog who is able to um, sniff out things like ivory or animal skins um, that are being illegally traded. OK, now this one's a bit more tricky, so you're going to have to be a bit more creative on how you are going to answer your questions. OK, but again, I would like you to think about those four titles, natural, economic, social and who decides in relation to the picture of this sniffer dog who is able to sniff out um, in the, some of some of the products from the illegal wildlife trade. I would like you to pause the video now and have a go at that. Excellent year five. So you should have two sets of questions, one about the pangolin and one about um, the sniffer dog. OK, if you would like to have do some extra work on this, you can choose another endangered animal and ask questions about that using those four titles. Another thing that you could do is you could answer some of you could answer some of your questions um, you ask by researching using the internet. Those are extra tasks that you can do if you would like to. Please do uh, take a photo and upload your questions from the pangolin and to the sniffer dog um, onto Seesaw, and I look forward to looking at that this week. Thank you, Year 5, and I will see you next week. Bye.